welcome to another episode of Chalet Corner. I'm Pat. I'm Gwen. So now we're going to do something special. We've got a lot of requests for how to make coils. Uh, one of the things that we have here is a toolkit that we put together. I've researched, uh, researched all over the internet, researched some other stores, and nobody really had any specific tools to get started in, in making coils. So that's what we're going to do. It's basically a starter kit. The toolkits, they come in several different colors. Check out our website. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, we'll do a close-up when we sit down at the table. We've got a customer that's come in. He kind of sort of knows how to do coils, but he kind of sort of doesn't. So we'll kind of do little tips and tricks. We're going to ask Jeff to join us. So let's get started. Okay, now we've got Jeff here. Hey, how's it going? Welcome, Jeff. Uh, Jeff kind of sort of knows how to do coils, but we're going to give him a few tips and tricks on how to set them up properly. Uh, he said that he doesn't have a toolkit, but here's an example of what it is. Obviously, we've got silver. In our kit, we've got six different screwdrivers. There's three flathead and three Phillips. And each one of them, the posts are different, as you can see. We'll pull them out shortly and we'll use them. Uh, also, on the other side, we have a foot of 28 gauge wire. We have organic cotton ball. We have one cotton ball. We have a pair of needle nose and a pair of cutters. This is our atomizer. We're going to use the Hades Addy simply because it's big enough as you can see. We've got a large deck so we can, uh, so everybody can see how we're going to do this. Let's screw it on to our, we have a building block. A friend of mine made these, are made out of aluminum because when we get into making the coils we don't want to lay it down on the wood because I don't know about you but I ain't trying to catch on fire so. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so that way we'll just lay it on here so we can let them cool just very briefly. We'll grab our screwdriver, got our Phillips, raise up the screws here so we can thread our wire through them. Alright, so I've got mine. So you got yours going? Mm -hmm. Jeff's got the toolkit. Mine, if you guys are noticing, I've got I've kind of upgraded mine. Again, this is one of the starter kits that we're gonna do. We'll grab, we have 24 gauge wire. And one thing, uh, Jeff and I were talking, what was it, you were asking about the resistance and the wire, and what were you asking? Yeah, um, well basically, you know, starting out as uh, New Vapor, um, I didn't know, you know, what, what coils do what, you know, I hear people talking about ohms, and, and none of it made sense to me. So it's like, how many wraps do I do, um, you know, what gauge wire do I use, so it's just, you know, questions that I want to figure out, so. Well, the 24 gauge wire, typically there's several factors into making coils. Um, first factor number one is the thickness of the wire. It also has to do with the thickness of the post, which is why we have in our kit, we've got three different size posts. Um, so you, it depends on how many wraps it is, how thick it is, uh, and then there's a little bit of tweaking going on. Uh, typically the lower the number, anything typically below a 1.0, uh, we call sub ohming. Uh, the hotter it is. Uh, if you're coming from a tank, usually they're. I think the lowest I've seen so far is maybe maybe a one. I think uh, there's some sub ohming going on. Or now, other than that, they're 1.5. So we try to gauge people in three different categories. When you're coming directly from a tank, we try to put people somewhere between a 0.7 and a 0.9 because we don't want it too hot, and you need to enjoy it. The second category would be, say, a 0 0.4, 0 0.5, up to a 0.7. It's kind of medium. And then by the time you get to the 0 0.4 and below, you should pretty much know how to do it. Um, so what it does is the lower the number, the hotter the vape, the more intense it is, the, hotter, the more nicotine is intense if you're using nicotine. Uh, what level of nicotine do you use, by the way? Uh, right now I'm using a 3 milligram. Are you at 3? Yep. And that's why some people that, let's say he was at a 12, we would automatically suggest that he drop to a 6 because it does intensify everything. Now let's, what we're going to do, we're going to grab our largest screwdriver out of here. Actually, I've got mine. Uh, these are, what are they, 1 16th of an inch. Okay, so typically what we're going to do is we're going to leave a, about an inch or so at the end of our screwdriver, and then we're just going to wrap you want to try and get it tight. Three. How, how, how many are we doing? Uh, we're going to do eight. Okay. All right. Now, see, I don't know if you guys can see how tight mine is and how his is. Kind of the space, and here's the idea behind it. 
So what you want to do is, as you do it kind of slow, and you want to try and squeeze it together. So here, unwrap that. Okay. That's all right. We start over. That's one thing. A cantle wire is very pliable. All right. So we'll start from scratch. That's all right. Everybody makes the mistake. Everybody <laughs> make, and that's part of being able to, to do this right. So as you wrap it, wrap it nice and tight, and then when you go around it, try and push it together. Okay. There you go. Perfect. And sometimes you get a little bit of the gap. Did you lose count? Yeah. Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough to remember the, the count. Yeah, it's seven. Okay, so then we'll take our cutters. There you go, right the cutters. And then you want to cut just a little bit longer than the other lead. So we've got a lead, probably yours looks similar to this. And we got one little bit shorter than the other. Like that? Yep. Okay, and then you grab your needle nose. Now, what we want to do is if you see how, I guess, wonky that is, if you will, how it's kind of. It's kind of offset, so we're going to pull it, and we're going to tighten it, so that way it's going to come off like this. Now, do you want to like grab it up as high as you can go? Let yeah, it sure, matter? as high as you can go, yep. Okay. And then pull it tight, and then pull it kind of up. It's all right. Dang, it can't get gripped. There you go. You getting there? It's okay. So let's do it one more time. We're going to do two coils. So again, we're going to hold it here and we're going to wrap. I made that five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then I'm going to pull it tight. I'm going to grab my cutters. And then I've got one lead here, a little bit. And then we're going to cut this a little bit, just a little bit longer. And here's how it's kind of separated. So we're going to hold on to it. We're going to hold on, grab it, and then we're going to pull it snug and then up a little bit so that way it's tighter. Okay. Sometimes it may be separated. We, the whole idea is to get it like this. Okay. And then we can slide it off. Okay. So now some people use what I've got here is a torch. Other people use a lighter, or you don't have to do this, but I find with me it's a little bit easier. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to condense this. So I'm going to grab it here, and we're going to make it a little bit tighter. So as we heat it up, it's going to start to glow orange. The whole premise behind this is as it starts to heat up, when it cools, it will keep its shape. There we go, starting to glow a little bit. All right, and then we'll set it down so it doesn't burn. We'll grab our other one. We'll pinch it together. And we'll do the same thing. Okay. Well, you did a pretty good job. Now let me sh give you one quick tip here. What we're going to do here is we're going to pinch this here like this. Okay, see how we're pinching that? Mm -hmm. And we don't want to pinch it too hot, or I'm sorry, too hard, because that way it'll deform. We just want it just enough so it'll keep its shape. All right. Okay, give it a whirl. Let me turn this, turn the torch on. There you Hold now it right how, at the tip of the flame. Right That's the tip? typically okay. the hottest part. Now how uh, as soon like, as it starts uh, to glow orange, mm -hmm. then you can set it down and grab the other one. Uh, okay. And set it right down on the How block. come you don't want it to get like all the way orange? Because in the past I've done you know a couple where I get them like as hot as I can go. Well, you just know, it's to... unnecessary. Uh, okay. Well, some of the thinner, I know although Canthal wire has a very high melting point, which is an advantage. Try not to get on the lead itself. There you go. Right. You want to do just the coil, because sometimes with the thinner wires, it'll, it it may it'll get too soft, and if you do it, move it the wrong way, it uh, it'll break off. That's good. Very good. All right. Well, let's shut that off. All right. 
And one reason why we're talking about is one lead shorter than the other. So that way when I slide this in, it's easier to fish it in and then we can just push it in. And then also I use this for leverage so I can, as I'm sliding it in, I can just kind of push it over, over to the middle because I want to be able to get, when we get to the cotton, I want to be able to put equal amounts of cotton on both sides. And what were you asking me about the leads, Jeff? Now, um, like, if since this one's shorter, you know, which which post do I put it in, or, you know, what 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 do you? Well, typically, is I'm not sure. Let's we'll see how short yours is here. Well, this one was a lot shorter. Yeah, so I see what you're saying about the shorter lead. Typically, because we're going to try and center this, is you don't want the shorter lead on this side. Now, how then, how far do you want like the? You want it. As, you want it. Some, you want it semi close to the post. Okay. So that way you've got more room from the <clears throat> for the uh, the cotton, and then also it's not going to touch the cap when we put it on. Like so, yep. So then when we put it on, it's all the way in basically there, and then we're going to put some force on it, and then try and mash it over there, and then you can tighten down that screw. All right. Sorry, I had your. That's fine. I'm going to do the outside first because on the inside they're going to crisscross. Ah, check out, check out, check. Now, how tight? Now, you don't want to put too tight because some of the thinner wires, if you crank down on it, it'll snap. It'll break the wire. But it should be snug? Yeah, it'll be snug. Uh -huh. right. And that's one thing I like about 24 gauge. And then we'll take our cutters. We want to cut this as close to the post as we can get. Okay. And we'll just twist this around. We'll do this pretty quick here. And then we just do the same on the other side. Fish it through. And there we go. Okay. So we'll just... Jam it in there and put it in position. Tighten that down. And then we tighten the other side down. Or right in the middle, I mean. Okay. So now we've got our coil set in there. And then we can actually just kind of use these and we can adjust it. And then we've got to be able to, we're going to be able to gauge where our airflow holes are. And let's grab, take this off. We want to test the resistance of how hot this is going to be. So we'll grab our ohmmeter, spin that on, and point, what do we say, 0.34-ish, give or take? Yep. Oh, look, 0.33. So it's pretty intense. There you go. So one thing you've got to be careful is to make sure that you need to find your sweet spot. I don't know, what have you been dripping for a little bit now? What's your yeah. resistance? Well, basically, um, you know, when I started building coals, I really didn't even have an ohm reader, so I couldn't, couldn't <laughs> tell you. Not. I was just, <laughs> hey, it works. It puts out vape. Okay, cool. That works for me. Have you te you've tested them since then? I've tested them. You found um, your sweet spot? What do you like? Oh, uh, I, I still don't have one. I need to get one. You but um, one. All right. Well, uh, kind of. so, I mean, I've used it, and I tend to, uh, well, I kind of go more towards the the cooler vape. Mm -hmm. I guess it's probably yeah, my my that. skill. You know, my skill is not on par, but right. you know, I'm gonna try to get it. But I actually don't even mind. You know, some of the cooler mm -hmm. the cooler vapes. Okay. Um, yeah, this one might be a little too hot for you. We just want to throw something on here. Yeah. So go ahead, grab your mod, and then we're gonna we're gonna fire it up, and we're gonna do a little bit of tweaking. and get it set exactly the way we want it, and then we will throw some cotton in juice, and we're good to go. All right, so now I've got my Hades adding, or my Hades mod, actually. So now we'll raise it up. Let's take a quick peek and see if we got any hot spots. Let's see what happens when we fire this up. Oh, look, see the hot spots here? That's what we don't want. We wanted, the idea is to start from the inside and then work its way out, and we want them to work in sync. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our needle nose, and this is what I call tweaking. We just kind of pinch it here, pinch it there, because we want, if you can see here, how that that's kind of looped over it just a little bit. And we're going to pinch it so it's all running smooth. Let's see what we got now. There we go. Now, do you want to do it from the side, or do you like do it from the top? Because I'm like when you put the needle nose in, you do well, it from either. the side. Does it matter? No, uh-uh. Uh, no, I just try to find this little sweet spot here, so that way when we fire it up, 
and then we'll look at it and make sure it's aesthetically correct. We want it even on both sides. Okay. All right, let's see what you got over there, Jeff. All right. I about it. Yep. So you got that hot spot right there. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Now let's see what we got going on here. Yep, you've got a little bit here of how they're a little bit separated. So we give it a little quick pinch together. And make sure whenever you're using these is that you don't want to fire the button. You want to get it hot, let go of the button, and then mess with it because the metal is a little. So warm. should I fire it up first? Uh huh. Fire it up because we need to see where we need to tweak it. It's actually almost dead on. This one fires just a little bit slow. So let's spin it around and we'll work with this one. So when it fires slow, what do you what do you look for? Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it when, when all the coils wrap tightly together. If it's if it's like coming on slow, do you want to pinch it? Do you want yes? To... You want to kind of we're called yeah. We want to tweak it a little bit, pitch it on each side, and then you want to stick it through, and then pinch it together so that way it's give it a little pinch, quick one, and then stick the needle nose directly through it. And then just kind of pinch it together. There you go. And you may need to do it on the other side, but that's all right. Let's fire it up. Fire it up first. All Let's right. see what we got. It's almost right where we want it. See, this one fires up just a shade faster. Okay. So let's pinch that side. With this side? Uh-huh. Put it right through the middle, just like that. Give it a quick pinch. And then fire it again. There you go. Works spot on. All right. Okay. So it's just kind of little tips and tricks, you know. You, cool. If one side's firing faster than the other, you can squeeze it, you can pinch it, put it through. You want to take a quick look at it and make sure that all the coils are coming together because sometimes if, if one lead is kind of leap, looped over the other, it'll kind of get a, it may get a hot spot here or may get a hot spot on the other side. So yeah. the whole idea is to have them all wrapped perfectly and good. Yep. One reason what we were doing is we try to put it in the center as much as possible so when we wick it, with our organic cotton, um, we get equal amounts on both sides. We're gonna roll it up because what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed it right through the right through the coil. Okay. So we're gonna take this right in here. We're gonna fish it through, pull it through, and then we will start. See how it gets tight. That's where we don't. Now we know if we pull it too much, it's gonna get choked up on the inside. So now we're gonna pull it back a little bit. We'll kind of slide it back and forth a little bit. Make sure that's not choked. Do a cut, flip it around, want it nice and fluffy. Okay, there we go. And then we will take this and tuck it in. I like to do from the outside. We got a little chihuahua fuzz here. Take it from the outside and tuck it under. And this is a little thin, but we get the basic idea. Nice and fluffy. And then we're going to leave our channel underneath so then once we get it wet we're going to let the coal breathe all the way around it. So now we've got our cotton in. As you can see we'll go all the way around. All the way around that coil is open. Underneath is open and we're ready to juice. Looking good over there Jeff. Right. What juice you got going on over there? Uh, right now I'm uh, mother's milk? using the mother's milk. Uh, three milligram. Yeah. I actually, uh, Suicide Bunny is probably on my top right now. Really? Yeah. yeah uh, they make good juice. Just the flavors are for me. Mm -hmm. and it yeah, burns, we did, right? We did a review on them earlier. Oh, yeah. Now, we got to remember one thing is that that's dry cotton. If you bump it while it's, the cotton is in there, it will catch on fire, just like your clothes or anything else. So you be careful not to bump that and get it and have the coil catch on fire. So now we're going to wick, we're going to, you want to soak the cotton. Get it nice and wet. Definitely you want to get on the coil itself. Some other people have asked, hey, do I put it on the coil? Absolutely. Because you don't want what's inside the coil to go dry because then you'll get a nice cottony taste and that doesn't taste good. I'm going to get the wicking process started. So I'm going to fire it up, give it a quick blow, and then we'll do it one last time. Put a couple drops on our coil to make sure what's inside of that. Because as this heats up, it's going to draw the liquid from the cotton, and then as you can see, it vaporizes it and it spits. Okay, so now we've got our cotton in, and then what we're going to do is we're going to line up on this particular atomizer. We've got hole here, hole here, and we're going to line them right directly up with our coil. 
So I'm going to put it on. If you look right through here, or if you look right through here, you can see the holes. Now, how much airflow do you want? Like all the way open? That depends on your personal preference. I mean, if you like a lot of airflow, and what we'll do is we'll hold on to it, and you can close it up. Okay, and you match it right with your coils? Yep, and line it right up with the coil, and then stick it on. Okay, grab my tip, put my tip on, and then ready to bait. Too hot? No, I like it. It's good. Very good, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate the help. Uh, I learned a lot today, and, and uh, my coals will be a lot tighter now. <laughs> and, uh, well, the whole idea is the more service area that you get, which is, the you know, we're talking about the thicknesses of the wire. The more service area, the better the bait, um, the better the nicotine hit, if you chose to use nicotine. The denser the cloud is, because as that coil heats up, it thickens everything. And one last thing about cleaning the coil. Remember how we were firing it up and we were getting a nice bright orange? Mm -hmm. There's a trick to cleaning this. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know you could clean coils. Yeah, you absolutely <laughs> can. With these, with these coils that we make, you can actually clean them. Because once the part of it is, is when you find your sweet spot that you like. Like, for example, this is a .33. It's a little bit too warm for me, but we just want to make an example. Um, we'll take the cotton out. Because sometimes with drippers, the coils will get gunky, they'll get real dirty depending on the thickness of the juice or if you use a high VG juice. Um, just take the cotton out and you'll fire that battery, fire that button, it'll start to glow orange, it'll let go of the button, and then you can stick it under some water. And what it does is it'll help rinse off the deck, rinse off your coils. And depending if your coils are gunky pretty bad, um, you may need to do it a couple of times. The downside is, is it'll kill your battery. So, don't want to do it too much. So we'll fire it up, get it done, and then you can re-whip and you're good to go. Cool. Cool. Thank See you. Again, I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for helping out. No problem. That was good. I'm glad Jeff could join us. So stay tuned next week. We're going to go through another rebuildable. Uh, we've got a special, I know we've already done a review on it once. We've got a brand spanking new rebuildable that I have yet to see out on YouTube. We've got our, what's our mech mod? Stingray? Yeah, oh, stainless. Oh yeah, the stainless Stingray. And then for our accessory, we're gonna go over some different types of drip tips. I'm sure there's thousands of them out on the market. Uh, but for our juice, we have a very, 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 special, very special, 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 special guest. We're gonna do a juice line. Very special interview, so you definitely don't wanna miss next week's episode. So, thanks again for joining us. And remember here in Chalet Corner, Smoking is definitely prohibited, but vaping, vaping is, is always, always encouraged. encouraged. Thanks, guys.